In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept of recursion and how the calls, the recursive calls, are being made. So this is not specific to a programming language. Uh, it's the algorithm itself and the concept. Uh, to do that, I'll start with a factorial example. Factorial example or factorial function is not a good example to be actually implemented in, in a recursive way. The iterative, example, the iterative implementation is much uh, clearer and more understandable. But it's a very good example to illustrate how the recursive calls are being made. So that's why I, I chose this example here. So let's uh, start with the concept of factorial. Um, so le let's say that I have, for example, four, uh, the factorial of 4. The factorial of 4 is basically 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The factorial of any number is basically the number itself multiplied by all the integer numbers that are less than that number all the way down to 1. So n times n minus 1 all the way down to 1. So for example, uh, let's look at factorial of 3. 3 factorial is basically 3 times 2 times times 2 times 1. If you look at the 4 factorial and 3 factorial, I can say 4 factorial is basically 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is basically 4 times 3 factorial, right? Because this is 3 factorial. So I can, just like that, summarize this and say n factorial is basically n times the factorial of the number that is less than n by 1, which is n minus 1. So 10 factorial is basically 10 by 9 by 8 by uh, 7 all the way to 1, which means 10 times the 9 factorial. So now this is the, the recursive definition. So let's summarize this one more time here. So n factorial is basically n times the n minus 1 factorial. If I name the n factorial as a function uh, that is called f, for example, f of n is basically n times the f of n minus 1, right? If f is the factorial function. So that basically means that the recursive function is basically a function that calls itself in the definition but with a different input. So the input for this function is n, but in the call, the, in the inner call, the uh, input for the function is different, which is, for example, here n minus 1. That's how we, we build a uh, recursive function. So one more thing is that in mathematics, we define the um, uh, factorial of 0 to be 1. That's a definition. We don't say, we don't multiply 0 by anything. It's just that we define 0 factorial by, uh, to be 1. And so 1 factorial is going to be 1 times 0 factorial. 0 factorial itself is 1, so it's going to be 1. 2 factor, factorial is 2 times 1 times 0 factorial, which is going to be 2. So basically, this is the, uh, the base or the building block for all the uh, bigger uh, factorials. We will implement that in the code as well. So let's try uh, writing a very simple pseudocode for this. Um, so let's say I, I, I define the number, the function, uh, the name of the function to be factorial, and then it will take an integer n, for example. If you're writing in Python, you don't need to define the type itself, but for example, in Java or C++, you define the type. And then if you're working with Java C++, you also define the return type. Um, for example, here is long, long is basically a very big integer. Uh, if you're working with Python, you don't define that one either. And then the definition of the function itself is that um, let's try um, to define the uh, result. So let me write it clear here. So the type of the result is going to be long. And then the result is basically n, just like this definition here n multiplied by the factorials of n minus 1. So again, if you're using Python, you don't really need to define this. And then after that, you return that result from the function. So this is the recursive definition of the function. It's not complete yet, but um, it's a good example of how the algorithm works. So now let's see how, how the uh, recursive calls here are being actually made. Okay, I copied the function that I had in the editor here, and I'm going to walk you through the process of the uh, function calls. So let's say that we want to calculate the factorial of 4. Every time we have a, fu uh, a function call, uh, there will be some variables 
uh, that will be ne that are needed to be stored in the memory uh, that are specific to that call. For example, there are some local variables here like n and result that are specific to that call. So there will be some reservations in the memory for that. Also, there will be a, a, a variable that uh, stores the address of where were we before this function call, so that after the function returns, uh, the compiler knows where to go. So what I do is I create this rectangular here, and it's basically just a symbol to show that um, this is uh, all the operations and variables that are uh, related to this specific call. And the colors here are important, so blue basically means that this is for the call of uh, when the n was 4. So it will go through this, uh, this function, it will define a result variable, and then it will, the n is 4, so it will try to calculate 4 times the factorial of 4 minus 1, which is 3. Because we have another function call here, it will go and try to um, um, call the function with number 3. So it will not go to the next operation, because this is a function call. It will wait until the answer or until the result of this function is determined, and then it will come back and go to the next line. So here, once it sees this, this um, uh, factorial call or a function call, it will go and book another piece of the memory uh, for this new call. So now we're going again, it's the same call, so it goes again to the function. It will define another variable, which is uh, again called result, but it's different than this result, because this is specific for this call, and this is local variable for this call, basically. And now n is 3, so it, it will be n, which is 3, times factorial of 3 minus 1, which is 2. Again here, we have the factorial, we have another call here. So it will try to book another piece of the memory for uh, uh, calling this function. So now it's green. So again, it will go through this function again, defines a result variable, and now n is 2, so it will try to assign 2 times factorial of 2 minus 1, which is 1, to this. Again, this is another function call, so it will book another piece of the memory for this. It goes through the same function, defines the results, and then and this one, n is 1, so 1 times factorial of 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now here, factorial of 0, this should be de definitely 1. This is not something that we calculate. Uh, remember that we said in math, we define the factorial of 0 to be 1. So here, it's not going to be another function call again. It's just a direct return. This is the base that we talked about. So if we reach, n, we reach 0 in n, basically, then it should directly return 0. So that means that here in the function, I have to define that base somehow. So I can simply define if n is 0, return 1. And as you see here, it will return 1 and it will not go through the rest of the function. Anytime you have a return, it will directly return from there, it will ignore the rest of the function. So if n is 0, now it returns 1. So now that it knows this is, this is 1, this value is basically defined. So it will try to return 1, so this value is going to be 1. So now it has the value of this, so, it's going to, so the result can be calculated 1 times 1, which is 1. So now this result is 1. So as you see, after we had this, the, the value of this function, then it went to the next line. Now it will, uh, the next line says to return result, so it will return. So now it will return this to uh, the, the colleague function, the color function basically. So now the factorial of 1 is 1, so we know this. And so the green result now is going to be 2 times 1. Again, now that we have the uh, value of this factorial, then it goes to the next line. And then, so it will try to return this result to the uh, next factorial. So now this is 2, we know this is 2, so now we have the return of this. 3 times 2 is 6. So now it goes to the next line, return result, so now result is 6, it will return it to the color function. Again, the color function now, we know the value of it is 6, so 4 times 6 is 24. So now that we're done with this line, it goes to the next line, 
and then the result is 24, so it will return the 24. There's a funny example of uh, how to explain the concept of uh, recurs recursion, and that's about uh, uh, the Russian doll. So imagine that you have a doll that is in a box, and that box is in a bigger box, and the bigger box is in a much bigger box, and so on. So you have several boxes, one inside each other, and then at the very inner one, you have the doll. So if you want to take the doll out, you have to open the first uh, box. The first box is basically the, the outer call. And then you open the second box, and then you open the third box, and all the way down until you reach the doll. So, and then when you want to put the doll back and close everything, again, you start from the doll, put it back, and then you go, you close the, the box, and then you close the outer box, and all the way up to the uh, very uh, outer box, uh, which is basically the returns of all the functions.